we're live. Hey, I'm by myself today. Hello, this is Jerry Pallotta. And um, I've been trying to show during this remote learning, I've been trying to show different authors and illustrators uh, all month. But today I don't have any other author and illustrator. You know, I was hoping to have Rob Bolster, the illustrator of the Who Would Win books, but he's a busy guy. He's doing some big painting today, so he couldn't be on. So hello, everybody. And I thought I'd talk about the Who Would Win series because I've been, sort of been all over the all over the place, talking to um, talking with all the other authors. So thank you all my other authors for showing up and doing such a great job. So teachers ask me all the time, when you started writing the Who Would Win books, um, how did you think of it, or was it your idea? Sometimes books are um, other people's ideas. You know, sometimes there's a writer and he writes a book for someone else who has an idea for a book. Sometimes the author thinks of his own book. Sometimes a committee at the publishing company uh, thinks of a series, and then they hire different authors to write the series. But in this case, I did it all myself. I thought of that, who would win? And uh, the first book I thought of, I really only thought of one book when I started. I only thought of this, Kill a Will versus Great White Shark. So that was the whole idea. Kill Will versus Great White Shark, two great predators. And because of the movie Jaws, I always thought that the shark would win. I thought the shark was like just unbelievable in the ocean. It wasn't until I started doing research that I realized what would really happen. So I'm debating whether I should tell some of you kids the endings to these books, or maybe I should make you read the books. So I thought of that too. Well, anyways. Rob Bolster did the illustrations for me. You might remember Rob Bolster. He illustrated the Hershey, <clears throat> the Reese's, and the Twizzler series for me. He also did Go and Lobstering and, he, and um, some other books. So Ro I already knew Rob, and he already worked for me for years and years, and uh, he did a great job. So one day I said, hey, will you uh, make a cover for me? Uh, kill a will uh, versus great white shark so teachers here's what really happened i wanted to do a big book like this i didn't want to do a little reader like that i wanted to do a big book and kill a will versus great white shark because in my head i was only thinking of one book it was only later on that i thought of doing more books so um here's what happened um i did research well, from writing other ocean books, I knew about the killer whale. And from writing other ocean books, I knew about the great shark. So have I ever seen a great white shark? Uh, I touched a great white shark two years ago. Maybe I'll show, show that picture if I can find it. Uh, someone caught one in situate Massachusetts where I grew up. And they hung it up in the town. And 2,000 people went to see this incredible shark. Have we ever seen a killer whale? Only, yes, I saw one in Alaska when I went on a trip to Alaska. But have I ever seen a live killer whale? Yes, in Alaska, but uh, not up close. I only saw one up close when I was uh, at SeaWorld. So that's my story, and that's, that's what happened. I wrote this book, Who Would Win? Killer Whale versus Great White Shark. I immediately thought of this, Who Would Win? Uh, Lion versus Tiger. And of course, uh, I have to make a confession in front of all the kids. In the book, the lion wins, but in real life, the tiger would win. Of course, it, it also depends on which cat is the best athlete, you know. It's just like sports, you know. Someone could be better than someone else and faster and quicker, but someone else could be more aggressive and more uh, a better athlete. So um, in real life, the tiger hunts alone, fights alone, uh, is very intelligent. And in real life, the lion is not that intelligent. He's a pack animal, and he, as a rule, doesn't hunt or fight alone. So um, he's more used to fighting in a pack. So one-on-one, -on -one, the tiger would win. They say in ancient Rome, out of a thousand fights, the tiger always won. So they say that, you know, in the Colosseum there in Rome, all the records they kept, whenever they put them against each other, the tiger usually won. So that's what I read. But I had the lion win, so kids would argue with me. What I was really trying to do, teachers, I was really trying to write books that compare the two creatures. So I tricked you kids. I was writing compare books. Like, look at this right here. Um, here's a lion. Here's a tiger. If you compare the two of them, you know, 
That's what I was trying to do. And if you look at the killer whale versus great white shark, you know, I was trying to write, I was trying to compare them. For instance, look at this page right here. The uh, killer whale has lungs, the shark has gills. The killer whale is a mammal, the shark is a fish. The killer whale breathes air, the shark does not breathe air. So I was really writing compare books. So these are science books, compare books. Uh, look at this page right here. We have um, the, the killer whale has a tooth shaped like your finger. They call it a conical tooth. It's like a cone, conical tooth. And the great white shark has a triangle shaped tooth like a razor blade. So killer whale, great white shark, there you go. So I wrote the, and I designed the books like this. On this side is always, on this side is always the, uh, where am I? On this side is the um, killer whale, and on this side always the great white shark. So the whole book was, I'm like, when it's writing this, that's what I was doing, okay? Hey, so, Jerry, um, sorry, to, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Do you mind taking out your headphones? Uh, we're getting some static in the background, so just so we can hear you best. Go like that? Yeah, and pull it out of the computer. All right. How about that now? Perfect. Is that better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that better? We still getting static? Nope, sounds great. Know. Sounds great. It sounds great. All right, I took my earphones out. How about this? Polar bear versus grizzly bear. I looked for over two years to find an incident of them ever fighting. Okay? So what can I say? People say to me, how do you know who would win? I don't always know who would win. But I read, I read, I read, I ask people at the zoo, I ask uh, scientists, you know, uh, Roland Smith, the author who was on earlier in the, uh, in the month, Roland Smith, uh, he used to train lions and tigers and elephants. And in the zoos, when he was head of the zoo in Seattle, he had polar bears and he had grizzly bears. So he gave me his opinion of who he, he thought would win. But I, in this case, I really didn't know who would win, you know? So, and I couldn't find an incident of them, of, ever, of them ever fighting. Of course, hey kids, wanna see a mistake I made? This is a really bad mistake, but it turned out okay. So if you look, I wrote a book. Um, let me just check my notes here. Hey, I wrote a book and, and uh, how's that? Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Velociraptor. And um, I picked the, uh, I wasn't paying attention actually. And Rob started drawing the pictures. So he already drew a bunch of T-Rex pictures and he already drew a bunch of Velociraptor pictures. But I never knew that the T-Rex was 20 feet tall. 20 feet tall. That's, look, I'm, I'm not even six feet tall. So three times higher than me, more than three times higher than me. And um, by the way, in the background of my secret weapons, uh, Jamie and uh, Mary Alice, Mary Alice, Marie is looking for you. So I'll just leave it at that. So, um, and Jerry, if you can unplug your power from your computer, computer, that would be great. What's that? that great. If you can unplug the power unplug from your computer. I'm uh, not sure it won't go off. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it. All right. Thanks. We'll leave it. Thanks. Want to try it? Sure. Sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll go off. Okay, let's leave it as okay, is, and if, it as is and if if we need to, we will. We need to, we will. All right. So uh, the t the Velociraptor is only three feet tall. So in the book, I have a twenty foot dinosaur fighting a three foot dinosaur. So of course, after a while, it was like, uh oh, what are Rob and I going to do? How are we going to deal with that? So eventually, uh, I'll show you how we dealt with it. <laughs> Here's a page in the book, right? So there's the 20 foot T-Rex and he's fighting a three foot Velociraptor. And um, so I got in trouble working on that book. I wasn't really paying attention. So there you go, kids, you know one of my secrets. But what happened in the book? What did I do? I ended up, have, I ended up having the uh, dinosaur fight a gang of them, okay? And uh, hold on here. Let's see. 
How's that? There we go. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going. But uh, kids ask me all the time, where do I get book ideas? Where do I get book ideas? First of all, I've said this before. I pretend I'm eight years old, and I think if I was eight years old, what would I love to read? If I was eight years old, what would I love to read? So uh, one day I thought I'd love to know a hammerhead versus a bull shark. And a bull shark is a really aggressive shark. A hammerhead is more of a deep water shark. So the chance of a person running into a hammerhead is very slim unless they're out in a boat. But a bull shark, they swim in shallow water. They even go rivers. And um, I found on the internet one day on YouTube that a bull shark on the top of bull shark swim up a river in Africa and uh, got eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> so there you go. And then uh, I thought, what else could I do? Maybe it's time for some reptiles. So I wrote a book, Komodo Dragon versus King Cobra. So there's the biggest lizard in the world, a Komodo dragon, against the longest poisonous snake in the world, venomous snake, venomous. Hey, you know what I learned writing these books, kids out there, if you want a great lesson today? Here's a, here's a great lesson. Um, guess what I learned? That when, when an animal bites you and puts poison in you, that's venomous. But when you bite the animal and you get sick from biting the animal, that's poisonous. So if I bit a poison frog, that's poisonous. I bite the frog. But if the snake bites me, that's venomous. So that's what I learned when I was working on these books. Venomous versus poisonous. And then uh, here we go. Um, so uh, look at the uh, Komodo dragon. He drools dangerous bacteria. But kids say to me, uh, kids say to me, where do you get some of your book ideas? So I'm going to share a screen only. My secret is going to share the screen in the back. I'll show you. It's a very short film, teachers. You could show the kids in the classroom on YouTube of a crab and an octopus. So you wonder where I got some book ideas. Sometimes I see them um, on YouTube. But I never wrote this book. But I thought of this book, and it was, it was really an interesting video. So I don't know if we can show that screen. And by the way, Jamie, I don't see anything on my screen except your face. So here we go. All right. Here's the screen. Uh, I'll tell you here. Um, people say to me, where do you get your book ideas, what I'm thinking of, and all that sort of stuff. And here, you see the pool of water, and you see that crab right there? I'm exactly what kind of crab it is. It looks like a valley lightfoot type crab to me. See the crab right there? Watch what happens, because I can't believe it. I took this whole video in Australia, and uh, you, we'll show you some book ideas. But I was just, you know, looking around, and I saw this thing, octopus uh, versus crab. See the crab right there? We'll see what happens in a second. And um, there, the octopus got him. He jumped out of the water. He now has the crab. And what's really amazing is I never knew octopuses could walk. Think about it. They have eight legs. But you know what I learned? I learned that they could pick the crab up with two of their arms and position the crab in such a way that, that uh, the crab doesn't bite the octopus. And then the octopus walks back into the water. And I don't know if the folks can see that. I don't really see it right now. So I'm sorry if my technical stuff's all messed up. So Jamie back there, I can't see the video, so I don't know what's going on. We just showed we just showed the video. We just showed it. Okay, good. So kids, here's what else happened. Tigers are really big. Tyrannosaurus Rex is really big. The Komodo dragon, he's ten feet long, the biggest lizard in the world. Then I thought, you know, there's other creatures on Earth. So I thought of this one day. Who would win a tarantula, which is only about as big as my hand, you know? Who would win a tarantula versus a scorpion? And that scorpion is just an amazing creature. So they could pinch you, they can bite you, they can sting you. And what did I learn about a scorpion? After he catches his egg, he goes up for his parent. After he catches food, he uh, throws up on it. So is that an amazing fact? When I'm at schools, I debate whether I should tell the kids that. 
But I always compare it to like going to McDonald's. What if you went to McDonald's and you got a cheeseburger and then you threw up on it? And then when the cheeseburger was all gooey, you could swallow it. But that's how a scorpion eats. He digests his food outside of his body. So when I'm writing these books, I learn amazing facts. And I think, wow, I got to share these really cool facts with all these kids. Uh, here's one, Wolverine versus Tasmanian Devil. And many people say the Wolverine is the toughest animal on earth. It's only about as big as a kindergartner. But in the research I did, in the research I did, I found that uh, a, a Wolverine chased a grizzly bear away. Then I read another account of a Wolverine chasing uh, a pack of wolves away. And nobody wants to mess with him. He has big claws. He's very aggressive. You know, so some people think the Wolverine's the toughest animal on earth. By the way, I get letters from kids that are really funny. Kids uh, say to me that I should have written the honey badger bites the Wolverine. Because in Africa, they think the honey badger is the toughest animal on earth. All right. So there you go. I thought uh, that's what kids tell me. I should have done Wolverine brain versus honey badger. But I did it against the Tasmanian devil. The Tasmanian devil, I guess, has the strongest jaw of many animals. You know, stronger than a tiger jaw, stronger than a great white shark jaw. And what a great creature. But mostly he's a screamer. He screams so loud, he scares the predators away as far as I could tell from what I could read. So Rob Bolster and I were talking one day, what should we do next, what should we do next? And Rob loves the giant squid and he loves the uh, whales. You know, I grew up in situate Massachusetts on the ocean. He grew up in Point Judith in the summer in Rhode Island, in Point Judith straight on water. Um, so um, how's this? There's a book. And let me see what's going on. It says, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. They say I'm getting static everywhere. So we're having a bad day technical wise. So uh, teachers, kids, I hope the static isn't that bad. There's a sperm whale on the cover versus a giant squid. And um, it's amazing how long the giant squid really is. Um, as long as your classroom, like from one corner of your classroom to the other corner of your classroom, you know, that's how big the giant squid is. And of course, the sperm whale has the largest head and the biggest brain of any animal on earth. Now, people say to me, well, that's easy. This, the whale's going to win because whales eat giant squid. But you know what? Every now and then a whale washes up, covered in sucker marks from the suction cups on the giant squid. Every now and then a whale washes up dead, covered in sucker marks, so we know that he lost he lost the battle. Hey, here's another small here's another one of little creatures that kids love. A hornets versus wasps. We all have great stories about hornets versus wasps. And of course, I'm always comparing creatures and I'm always trying to teach kids as many things as I can. There's something in here I'd love to show. Look at all the different bees and look at all the different bees and hornets and wasps. I never knew there was a, it's over here, I guess. I never knew there was a green bee. You know, I never knew there was a blue bee. I never knew there was purple bees. You know, when you think of all the bees and hornets and wasps around the world, I just never knew there was so many great bees. So I think any kid reading this book would love to learn about all those different creatures. Here's one, alligator versus python. And Mary Alice in the background is going to show you a video that I saw once. First of all, if you search the internet, you'll find a picture of an alligator swallowing, um, I mean, a python, which is a snake. But it's not a poisonous snake. It's not a venomous snake. Because it's not poisonous, kids, you could bite the snake and it won't hurt you. You could bite him. And he could bite you and it would just hurt, but he wouldn't put any poison in you because pythons. I'm poisoned. But, um, here's the book. It looks like this. An alligator versus a python. And that's a real fight going on in Florida right now. So people bought snakes at a pet store. And then when they got tired of them, they threw them in the Everglades in Florida. So now the pythons are overrunning Florida. And they're fighting 
the alligators and the alligators are mad because the pythons are eating some of their food. So they're really going at it. So that's a real fight really happening in Florida in the Everglades right now. So I asked a park ranger down in Florida, I asked him who would win. And he told me the biggest one always wins. And he told me that the fight would take 24 hours long. So when they finally entangle each other and go at it, 24 hours for the fight to take. That's what the park ranger told me. By the way, if you ever see any videos of real uh, killer whales fighting um, great white sharks, that's a three second fight. Three seconds, the fight is over. So you'll have to check that out. By the way, you can find that. National Geographic did a beautiful thing. They even filmed it. Uh, you know, there's these islands off of San Francisco called the Farallon Islands. And every summer, the great white sharks go out there. And one summer, when the great white sharks went out to the islands, the killer whales came and chased them. So they filmed them actually fighting. And you kids could watch it if you wanted to. So uh, I'm going to keep going. Oh, yeah. Maybe my helpers could show me a video of a alligator fighting a crocodile and you can see it it's going on in florida and somebody filmed it it's a pretty big alligator pretty big crocodile and um i'll i'll tell let's see there it is right there and if you could advance it up maybe to the middle of the screen there so where they're actually engaged in each other um there, there's the croc, there's the alligator, I mean, there's the alligator, and there's the python, and um, there's, a, there's a real fight. And see, there's the python right here. By the way, pythons are excellent swimmers. That's what I learned when I was working on the thing. Yeah, there's the python, got him. Uh, I would want to meet him. And uh, I don't know if this is from some television show or if this is from some, you know, movie special documentary but it ends up that the there's the there's the alligator there's the snake and they end up going at it that is really the alligator that is a real big thing so uh, these two finally meet up with each other and i don't think we're going to show the whole thing actually i'll tell you what happens in this video but it is if your mom and dad let you go on youtube you can look for some of these I just showed you the crab, the octopus, and then look at this. Here's the alligator, and they end up meeting up with each other. And let's see, where did it go? Um, I don't know what happened, but it's out there somewhere. And I think in this that particular video, uh, they end up the, the the alligator gets the python in its mouth, and it could crush him, but for some reason he doesn't crush him. I don't think he likes eating snakes, actually. So, uh, you know, it's not natural food he would, he would usually have, I don't believe. So here's the alligator who's not used to a big snake. And then he, they eventually just go their separate ways. They both realize it's not a, it's, it's not a good fight. So, uh, kids, I did write hippo versus uh, rhino. And I did go to Africa once. And when I was in Africa, I did see hippos and I did see rhinos. And my, my opinion after seeing hippos and rhinos is that nobody messes with a hippo. They're so big, they're fast, they can run faster than a human. People look at them and they think, well, they can't really run. Well, they can really run, you know? Hippos versus rhinos, and hippo has an incredible bite, those big teeth with those two tusks on the bottom. And um, it's amazing. They both eat grass, so they wouldn't really fight. They both eat grass. So it's one of those creatures. When I was writing the books, I was trying to have a different scenario for like every book. Like in one of the books, one's bigger than the other. In another book, one's faster than the other. In another book, like this book here, um, both of them just eat grass, so they don't even eat each other. So why would they fight? I guess they would fight over grass, or maybe they would fight over water. You know I have lobster traps in the summer, and I always go lobster in, so I always dream of this. Lobster is crab. I told them I was going to throw a lobster in a tank and throw a crab in a tank and then just walk, wait and watch what happened. But you know what? I, I just never did it. I didn't want them to fight anyways. But there, <coughs> in real, 
in real life than if they would fight. So my cousins in Virginia, they catch blue crabs. They think the blue crab would win because the blue crab is so fast. And of course, I think the lobster would win because he has a tail. And if he got in trouble, he would just go and get out of trouble. So I always thought the lobster would win. His shell is a little thicker. His claws are a little stronger. But the crab, he's really fast and feisty. You know, if you're on land and they run, I don't know if you could catch one that's so fast. So uh, I have to laugh because I wrote a book, Jaguar versus Skunk. And I have to laugh because uh, a second grade boy came up to me and said, Jerry Palata, you have introduced chemical warfare into the series. So it was really interesting for a second grader to say to me. Uh, and look at that, jaguar versus skunk. Of course, the jaguar is like the greatest hunter that ever lived. You know, I just love reading about the jaguar. And the jags are from South America. Skunks are all over the world. Skunks are everywhere but Australia and Antarctica. That's what I learned researching the book. But the jaguar, he's a, he's a South American animal, and he is the greatest hunter. Uh, I think I read that they, they've seen them eat 85 different types of animals. They also saw them climb trees. They can swim. They're one of the cats that can swim. He's like an all-around the best fighting cat, the best hunter, you know. But does he want to get sprayed in the face? So this guy at the zoo told me if he gets sprayed in the face, he would be sort of blind. He wouldn't lose his eyesight, but he would be somewhat blinded for like two hours. And he would smell awful. And his lungs would be burning. So he has to think, does he want a little meal like a skunk, smaller than a football, just so he can get sprayed in the face? I don't know. I think he'd rather get a deer. So I did another dinosaur book. The dinosaur book I had uh, sold really well, and kids love dinosaurs. So I wrote one, Triceratops versus Spinosaurus. You know, sometimes you just never know what animals you would pick. My editor, a guy named Roy, he was terrific. He said, Jerry, I, when I, was looking, I love the Triceratops. So now you know the real reason why I picked the Triceratops for the book. And then, of course, who would he fight? Well, the Spinosaurus, he's one of the newer dinosaurs that they discovered. I think they discovered it in the 1980s. Or maybe a little sooner. And the Spinosaurus is not as wide as other dinosaurs. He's more like streamlined. And they think he lived near water. And uh, he's, he's big and he's got that big fin. But uh, we do stuff like this in the books. We show the bones. So this is a Triceratops. This is a Triceratops skeleton. And there's a Spinosaurus skeleton. We showed the bones. And when you look at the Spinosaurus, he sort of looks like a fish, you know? By the way, you know what I learned researching these books? I learned that you don't know what color they are. So we love doing stuff like this. See all the different colored um, dinosaurs. And look, and we don't know what designs their skin had either. Think of animals today. They have incredible designs. So look, he did a, a Rob did a, uh, like a leopard design on the dinosaur. But why couldn't he have a leopard design, you know? And there's a, um, let's see, where'd it go? Sorry, kids. Uh, there's like a cow design. He did like a cow design on the dinosaur. Rob did a great job and a leopard design and a tiger design. Because why couldn't they? Why couldn't they look like tigers? You know? And um, here's some more books. Kids say, what made you think of this book? Well, I was trying to be different. You know, to do alligator versus crocodile, that's like a lot of a lot of people think I should do that, but those are like two very similar creatures. I thought this would be way more interesting. A rattlesnake versus a secretary bird. And everybody loves the name rattlesnake. It's just a great name. But nobody really knows a secretary bird. So I wanted to introduce a secretary bird to kids. I thought kids would really like that. By the way, you kids, a secretary bird is about as tall as a fourth grader. Uh, I'll show you how tall they are. They are four feet tall. So I'm only five seven, not five six. Whoop! There, look how tall he is. How do they do? There he is, right there. Look how tall he is. Taller than that little kindergartner right there. So there's a basketball player way over here. He's like seven feet tall, six eight or something. 
Look how tall that bird is. That bird's like really tall. So his legs are really skinny, so it's hard for a snake to bite him back. But he's really good at kicking snakes. By the way, every now and then we put a few jokes in the book. Here's one I think was a pretty good joke. I joked that um, instead of being that the secretary bird could be a soccer player because he's a great kicker, so maybe he would be a great he would be a great soccer player. So there you go. Maybe they should have called him a sec a soccer bird. Oh, what would they say in Europe? Football, a football bird. Um, hyena versus honey badger, and um, honey badgers are pretty ferocious. They witnessed a honey badger biting a lion in the nose. So that guy was asking for trouble. So there's some of the stories, kids. Um, then one day I thought of this. Instead of having one creature but fight another creature, now look at the cover. It's just one on one there. But in the book, it's 500,000 green ants versus 500,000 army ants. Somebody asked me, why did you pick the green ants? Hey, Mary Alice, why don't you show the kids some green ants? I think we put it up to like minute eight. Minute eight. Oh, you want me to start at minute eight? Minute, minute eight. I think we put it up. It's like a, it's a really long video, so we're not going to show the whole video. But there's a show in Australia about bugs, and uh, we're going to show you a few seconds of it. And kids, this is how I learned about the green ants. I was reading everything I could about ants, and that came up on this video. There's a scorpion right there. Look, he has what looks like lobster claws in his mouth right there. So he has pinchers like a lobster. Then he has lobster claws type mouth. Then he has the tail with the stinger. There's the scorpion. And in this, in this little video right here, um, the scorpion is fighting the green ants. But you got to remember, green ants live in a huge colony up in trees. And green ants... Um, I don't know if you could advance that up to about a minute eight. I don't know if you can do that. There's the green ant. How do you like that? He's got really strong jaws, great looking antennas, and he has chemicals in his abdomen. And when he chemicals, it warns all the other green ants, get ready for war or get ready for an intruder. So there, the green ants live by their trees. And see all the green ants there. By the way, these guys are from Australia. How do I remember about them? Reading books, reading books, reading books. Then I found YouTube, I think, Monster Bug Wars. But in this video right here, they're not looking at them. When they want to either protect their queen or they want to attack an intruder. Uh, you know, someone once said, you can fight one ant, but can you fight 500,000 ants? So there's the guy who narrates it. But And I love these guys. They build houses, they cut leaves with their mandibles, with their jaws, they cut leaves, and then they build houses. They, they actually um, they, uh, glue the houses together with fluid from the baby ants. And look at that right there. They, they work as a team. So, so here they are working on these green ants, and what happens one day? On my computer, it's up to a minute 45. Can you have up to like eight minutes? Pull the cursor or whatever there somewhere. It moved. I don't know. There you go. There you go. There's seven minutes. Oh, yeah, look. He's fighting a scorpion. So what happens in the video is one ant gives up his life to fight the scorpion and to warn the rest of the ants that he's out there. And he sprays some kind of acid in the air, and it warns all the other ants. So someone told me they didn't like this video because it made them itchy, or it made scary, spooky, or whatever. But uh, there's the green ants right there. So in the book that I wrote, I have 500 green ants, which live in the trees, fighting 500 uh, army ants, which live on the ground. So that was the idea. That was the idea behind the book. And uh, yeah, look at them. So they're fighting the sea right there, kids. There's the green ants, and they're fighting the uh, scorpion. So uh, where they they break off his his picture, and of course they there's so many of them. They're biting the scorpion everywhere, and there you go. 
that's that's what it looked like. See the scorpion right there? And see all the ants fighting them? And I thought you'd like to see that. But I'm not going to show the whole thing. And a uh, couple more books. Um, I am going to look for a video for a second. And Oh, yeah, there's some questions. Thank you, people in the chat room. So here we go. Um, let's see. Susan Hutchins of Colorado says, have you ever started doing research for a who would win books, then decide the two animals just weren't going to work out? I have to think if I did that. I have to think about it for a minute. Um, I don't know. I have to think about it. Well, <laughs> I had an idea to have a whale fight a mosquito, and uh, I couldn't really convince anyone it was a good idea. But I always thought the mosquito could bite the whale and give the whale malaria. Here we are, we're all afraid of a virus. Think about it, a little virus. Most people are afraid of great white sharks. They're afraid of you know, polar bears. They're afraid of snakes. But think of it, a little virus has totally turned the country upside down. We're not even in school. So I wanted to have a mosquito bite a whale and then write about it. And uh, I, just, I just never did it. But um, it wasn't because... It was more like everyone around me told me not to do it. I really wanted to do it. But uh, do you have a list of who would win books you'd like to write in the future? Uh, not really. I just do them one at a time. I, I just think what will be the best, who the next will be the best one to do next. I can tell you this I have animals that I like. like I always have a coyote book. I think a coyote is a great word. Kids love the word coyote. And coyotes have some mystery about them. So I haven't written a coyote, but I, I have an idea like that. Really put a, love to put a coyote in a book someday. I'd really love to put a walrus in a book someday. So I'm working on a book with a walrus in it right now. Um, so I do have ideas like that, but I haven't planned them out like the next 10 or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I haven't really done that. Uh, here's a question. Which of the books seems to be the most popular? It's hard to tell because right now, the one that came out first, The Kill Whale versus Grey White Shark, is the best selling one. So, is it the best? Is it the best selling one because it's Killer Whales and Great White Sharks? Or is it the best selling one because it came out first and it's been out the longest? So, I can't really tell. But I could tell you that, well, there's a shark one. Oh, here it is right here. So, right now, this is the best selling book. It is, it's, this one book has sold over a million copies. So that's the best selling who would win book right now. But it came out first. It's been out longer than any other book. So I don't really know. Um, I could say this. I was going to show the Rumble books in a second. And the Rumble books sell better than the other the two animal books. The two animal book is really what's in my head. Comparing two creatures, making kids learn about each one, studying the facts, trying to make a decision. And then here's another question from Craig Schroeder. Thanks, Craig, for coming back in. Thank you, Susan, for coming back in. It says, hi, Jerry. For us in the middle of the country, what is the secret to catching crabs? Uh, crabs eat fresh fish. So when I bait my traps and I use stinky old bait, the crabs don't really care about it. Like, <clears throat> But if I use fresh fish, the crabs really love it. Uh, da, but that's the crabs where I live. They're called Jonah crabs. We catch Jonah crabs. Uh, the crabs, like down in the Chesapeake Bay, they use chicken necks mostly uh, that I could see. <clears throat> but I have seen someone throw a piece of fish in the water in the Chesapeake Bay and pull it up like a half hour later. It's totally mangled from the crabs. So they would eat fish. They would eat chicken necks. They would eat a piece of steak. They would eat, they pr pretty much eat anything. So uh, that would be the secret to catching crabs. Of course, little crabs you could catch at low tide. When the tide goes up, just pick rocks up and then grab the little crabs. Hey, teachers, if you go on my website, there's a video called, uh, I think it's called Being in the Creek. And when you see me in the creek, I catch two or three little green crabs. And I just catch them with my hands or I corner them or whatever I do to get them. So you could catch the crabs with your hands if they're little and if they're big, you catch them in traps 
and uh, fishermen catch them in traps and they catch them, they drag nets on the bottom of the ocean. At least that's where I live. That's how they catch them. In the Chesapeake Bay, they use trot lines. They tie a, a, a chicken neck or a piece of fish every like 10 feet and they put the line way out, like the line would be 100 yards long. And then as they pull the line up, they scoop them up with a butterfly net or a crab net. So that's how they catch blue crabs. Um, by the way, before I forget, tomorrow I have Mark Tyler Nobleman coming on. And uh, he's different than me. He wrote a lot of different books. One of my favorite books he wrote is about Superman. It's about the guy who invented Superman, who thought of Superman, and who, uh, you know, went on to become famous. I mean, even America knows about Superman, right? And it became movies, it became a television show. So there was a famous guy and Mark wrote a book about that famous guy and he wrote other books, but I'll let him tell you about all his other books. He'll be on tomorrow with me. And then uh, I did want to say this, the Rumble books are different. Here's the four Rumble books. And by the way, I just finished the book, The Ultimate Shark Rumble. And I'll try to show you the cover in a minute. But there's Bud Rumble, Ultimate Bud Rumble. Here is uh, Ultimate Ocean Rumble. I think the Ultimate Ocean Rumble might be my favorite book because I'm an ocean guy. Ultimate Jungle Rumble, I really loved working on that. And here's the Ultimate uh, Dinosaur Rumble. And uh, the Rumble books don't have two creatures. They have 16 creatures in them. So look right here, there's 16 dinosaurs. And uh, they battle it out. After the first round, there's only eight dinosaurs. After the second round, there's only four dinosaurs. But you ready? Hey, you kids out there, here's a list of the dinosaurs. Kentrosaurus, Megalosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Utah Raptor, Yangchuanosaurus, Taurosaurus, Supasaurus, Micropachycephalosaurus. That's the dinosaur with the longest name in the world. Micropachycephalosaurus. But it's only as big as a chicken. Uh, so the biggest name has the smallest dinosaur. Gigantosaurus, Stegosaurus, Tyrannus, Tyrannotitan. I never knew that dinosaur until I was writing the book. Tyrannotitan. So there's the Tyrannosaurus rex, and then there's the Tyrannotitan. Uh, Styracosaurus, Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, Apatosaurus. I saw a video recently by Jack Horner, the famous dinosaur hunter. Kids, you want to look something up? Look up Jack Horner, famous dinosaur hunter. He was the first guy to discover baby dinosaurs. So not only did he find the eggs, he found the little babies. And then he found juveniles. <clears throat> like once we would be in kindergarten in our first grade. And then Allosaurus, Apatosaurus. Uh, so uh, Jack Horner gave a talk that he thinks the Triceratops, the Pentosaurus, and the Styracosaurus is that the same dinosaur. And that as the dinosaur, he got more, more horns. So a Styracosaurus, it looks like a, a Triceratops with a lot of horns. And of course, the Triceratops has three horns, one here and two like that. So, um, you know, we can all decide what we think. And my newest one, Falcon versus Hawk, just came out a few months ago. Falcon versus Hawk. And uh, I, I loved writing this book. It was just, it, I think it's one of the most beautiful books Rob has ever illustrated. You know, he just did a great job. Look at those eyes. Birds have incredible eyes. Look at those beautiful eyes. Rob drew those. And uh, look at the beaks. So we try to fill the facts, the books full of facts, full of information. And, um, uh, let's see if I have any more questions. So there you go. Nope. I think I'm all set there. But there's, there's pr pretty much, I will try to find a new cover for you just to tease you all. August 1st, my new book will come out. It's called Shark Rumble. I have the cover right here somewhere. I'll try to show it. I'll try to show it to you. It'll take me a second to do that. And uh, by the way, there was another video we were going to watch. Let me see, we watched crab versus um, the octopus. We watched the python versus the alligator. 
I'm trying to think of which of what other one we had. Oh yeah, we saw pictures. Maybe we can find it. We saw pictures of a, a, a shark up that swam up a river and a croc grabbed him. So who's the toughest animal, a shark or a crocodile? I don't know. But let's see if I can find this cover for you kids. And uh, by the way, here's a cute little story. If, if you look at this picture right here, if you look at this picture, people say to me, do you always get your way? Do you always do it? Look at this picture and you'll see that that's the jaw of a megalodon and that's the great white shark. So you can see the difference in size. There's the jar of the megalodon. There's the jar of the great white shark. So I won't tell you how the shark book ends, but um, I thought it'd be great if during the contest, the megalodon just ate all the contestants. <laughs> I thought that would be a great ending. And, uh, but, you know, oh, here we go. Here's the cover right here. So if you wonder what the book looks like, it's a new book. It's coming out August 1st. It's all done. It's been turned in. It's at the printing press. It's at the printing company. How do you like that? Who would win? Ultimate Shark Rumble. And on, on the bottom here, you have a goblin shark and a hammerhead shark. And up above there, there's a great white shark and there's a tiger shark. So there's two like traditional sharks and there's two like not, you know, not so traditional. A goblin shark is really ancient and looking and sort of prehistoric so there's a bunch of sharks now a cookie cutter shark is only this big so i would love to put the cookie cutter shark in the book but how could he fight a gigantic shark he just couldn't do it i'll have to save the cookie cutter shark for another book some other time so there you go there's a, a bunch of stories about uh doing my who would win books and thank you everybody I think I'm going to call it a day, and I hope you like the Who Would Win show. And by the way, teachers, if you look on my Facebook, at Jerry Pilata, uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on um, Facebook. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm on uh, Twitter. And on those different formats, I've read some of these books. So if you want to see me read some of the books, they're out there somewhere. And uh, check out jerryplata.com. And thank you, everybody, for having me. I hope it was a great day. And hang in there. We're all going to be back to school soon, I think. And uh, I hope to see you kids in your school. See you later. Thanks for having me. And thank you to all my fellow authors for coming on the show. <laughs>